All right, so we are going to look at the last question, last two questions. Figure 1.4 shows a pulse of light lasting 0.1 microsecond when it enters a 2 km optical fiber, becomes three pulses lasting in total 0.9 microseconds when it leaves. In a telephone conversation, a series of pulses is sent along an optical fiber. It is important that no light from one pulse overlaps the light from the next pulse. A second pulse of 0.1 microsecond must enter the fiber at least 0.9 microsecond after the first. So estimate the maximum number of pulses of light that can enter the 2km optical fiber in one second. So what it means is this. Let's look at figure 1.4 again. Now what happened is that originally the pulse is only 0.1 microsecond in width when it enters. So what happens is when it exits, it becomes three pulses with a spread of 0 0.9 microsecond. Okay. So let's examine the 2 km distance in more detail. Now in the 2 km distance, when one pulse is entered, it, it spreads into three pulses and has a spread of 0 0.9 microsecond. In order for the second pulse to be entered, it has to have a minimum distance of 0 0.9 microsecond from the first pulse. This is to ensure that the when it comes out, this second pulse will not overlap the first pulse, and so on and so forth the, for the third pulse, and so on and so forth. Now what happens if we have a case where the first pulse enters have a 0 0.9 microsecond spread, and the second pulse enters before 0 0.9 microsecond? When that's the case, you will see that the first pulse from the second pulse will overlap the last pulse of the third, first pulse. That means there will be some overlapping here. Now this overlapping will cause confusion in the receiver because they do not know uh, this pulse is from the first pulse or the second pulse. It's confusing. Right? So that's why there must be a minimum distance of 0 0.9. So imagine each one is 0 0.9 so in one second right in one second how many 0 0.9 microseconds are there so that will be the number of pulses you can put in one second so to calculate it's that simple it's just one second divided by 0 0.9 microsecond which gives you 1.11 1 times 10 about 6 okay so that's the answer so let's look at the last question Explain why this type of optical fiber is not used for the transmission of high data rates over a very large, a very uh, over a very long distances. So let's look at uh, what is happening here. So this is this is for one pulse uh, for two km. All right, we already have a spread of zero point nine microsecond. For one km, the spread is lesser. But imagine if you have something that is 10 km long, this spread of the first pulse will be even larger. It will get larger and larger as the distance is higher. So if the spread is higher, so the second pulse can only enter at an even wider uh, time after the first pulse. So that means in one second, you can only put a fewer number of pulses as compared to 2 km. All right? For 10 km, you can only put a fewer number of pulses. So as the distance gets further, the spread gets wider, the less number of pulses you can put, and it becomes not high data rate instead, it becomes slow data rate. So in order to answer this question, that's how I will put it. The longer the distance, the wider the spread of the output pulses. So the successive pulse that can be entered needs to take a much longer time than 0 0.9 microsecond to enter, causing the data rate to decrease. Right? So that's the answer for part 4. Okay, so that's the answer for the whole question. Thank you and have a nice day.